this one's not flex. So we're going to use this. So I think this should be the login login icon. Exactly. So we're going to copy this. We need to come here. We need to impute it. Import it rather. Then we're going to come here and see the login icon. And we're not going to see this, we're going to see sign up. Here we have it here. We can see here it's full width and it's not outlined like this. So how do we do that? We're going to see instead of outlined, uh, we need to go to the button, button component. We can see that this is contained. So we're going to take this contain here. Yes. I'm going to switch it to the outline to paste that. And the start icon login sign up. Okay. And then we also talked about it being full width. So let's try and access the full width property. Perfect. Now we have the username, email, password, and the button. Okay, so now what, what do we need to do? We first need to do a two-way binding with the inputs and their unchanged use states uh, handling. So what we're going to do is the we're going to come, we're going to have to like try and make this a bit more readable. How we going to do that? I'm going to come down here. I'm going to say uh, imputes. Imputes. I'm going to say constants. First of all, we have the user name imputes. I'm going to say set to user role imputes. I'm going to say equals to new state brackets. Going to say to so places have email sets email imputes here we have password we have password so we have the username input sets username email password input so. First things first, we're going to come to the, uh, also when this refreshes, we don't want it to start with the login because we're currently working on sign up. So we're going to come here and set this on for So that's automatically just starts with the sign up in makes it easier for us. Okay. So now we have this username level, we to see the value. Is going to equal to the if you are used to two way binding with two states, you should know this already. If you are not, I'm going to put the link in the description where I talk about that. So we're going to say on change. If a user changes anything, we're going to link it to the function. Yeah, and we're going to say sets username imputes. It's okay, we're going to say events. Here we're going to say within dots targets dot value. Okay, so we're going to do this with all the inputs. We're going to copy. Let's come down here, paste that. So we're going to clear here and say email. Uh, here we're also going to use to pin. And then here. We're going to paste that here. We're going to say password. Then okay, we're going to say password as well. Okay, so it's all good. And we also want to check if this is actually working. Uh, so in our button here, we're going to say on click. The user clicks this. Create handle submit 
So we just create a function here. Show mm, password. I don't want these two functions to trouble us. So just going to build into the little working space. So we're going to say constant and to submit. We're going to pass E here to prevent reloading of the page. Pass that there. We're going to say console.log and we're going to log in. We're going to log out the user name inputs plus the for the space. Then we'll also need to reach power. Oh no. Let's just put this and then we want to be sure that the on change and everything is working perfectly. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So here we're going to go to our console. Okay. To clear all of this, we're going to come to using it, type something. Uh, what error is it trying out? Nothing. I'll try this way. We're just going to ignore that. Uh, so click so we can see this 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 okay so that's perfect it's getting the value and the on change everything is working okay everything is working perfectly that's exactly what we want now we're going to validate this um how are we going to validate this when the user comes to the site at first it doesn't show an error but when they click and they click out without imputing anything, then it shows the error, it shows up the error. This works because this is an unblow event handler. Um, it means if the user clicks it, it's not going to show any error. When the user is done with what he's typing and tries to do any other thing, it will then throw up the error. So let's get back. Let's get back. So how are we going to do this? Um, each text field, in i'll tell you it comes with an error handler so if you just put error here it's going to show error well you can do that error equals to false and you would see it will show up any error or well, once it becomes true it will show up an error so we're going to create error checkers like um, they're going to store the value of the error if the username has an error it will store it if the email has an error it will store it if the password has an error it will store it so we're going to say input error uh, let's just say input let's see what do I call this thing I call them input errors yeah, simple input errors and the first is going to be um, we have the username, username error. We're going to see set username error. So at first, it's going to have a default value of undefined, of, sorry, not undefined, false. It means, it means there's no error here because the user hasn't done anything. So there is obviously no error yet. So we're going to create the same thing for email. Email here. Yeah. We'll create this for password and set password error. So all of these are forced, which is good. Now we're going to go here and we're going to see the error is going to be um username we're going to link it to the username l we're also going to come here i'm going to say the l will be linked to the email error just make sure all of them are linked to their in their error handlers so we're going to say l here let's just do this error and see how it shows it shows the error resolution down here right here should okay so the reason for that is that this this input here 
it shouldn't be over here. But the label, the font control, somewhere here needs to also show, it needs to also be given the value of um, the error, if there's error or this, no error. And that should be the label because you can see there's error here in the input, but in the limit, there's no error. So this inputs, this error is input here, just puts error there and see how it goes. Okay, so you can see both of them are red. So we want to link this, both of them to the password error. We're going to also reach this password. Okay, so now that we've done that, we've linked all the errors together, we can now start creating validation for our inputs when the user click and then unclick from it. So how are we going to do that? Uh, we're going to start with the first one, which is using it. Um, that on chain we have on block. And we're going to say handle username. Okay. So we're going to go come here. We have the handle submits. We're going to create, uh, we're going to say presentation for on block. Username. We're going to say constant angle into the username. So we already have the value of our username in our username input. So we're just going to check that and see what's going on. We're going to see use the simple if we're going to say if there's nothing in the username, the username input that means there's no value at all. Or there's something in it, or it is the length of it is is less than five characters because you don't want someone using like just one character as a username. Doesn't really make any sense. Or the username dot username impute dot length is greater than twenty characters. You don't want it to be too long and you know, boogles everywhere. That is not right. So now we have, if any of this happens, if there's nothing inside or, because it's the or operator or if the length of it is greater than 20 or it's less than five, it will show up an error. So how will it, how will you do that? It will now say set the username error to be true because now there is an error. There is a big error and then it's her. So let's check this. Let's check this. The username, if we click and we click out, it shows red. Why? Because it sets, once it sees that there's nothing in it, it resets the username error to true. And once it is true, the error here in the text field of the material UI component is set to true. And then boom.